Sometimes you can see it. Sometimes in a wet you can't. But when you hit it, you all know about it. This is the nastiest speed hump in Britain. Virtually invisible in the rain and very uncomfortable the rest of the time. But it's not the only one that will make your life a misery because there's another 150 of them on this estate alone. In a recent survey, the residents of Great Worley in Staffordshire nominated this particular speed hump as the worst in the UK. Maureen Cocaine lives in the village and has had hundreds of pounds worth of damage done to her car because of the numerous humps. Maureen, you're not a lover of speed humps, are you? I am not at all. I think they're a complete unnecessary thing to be on the road. Um, they did say they were to call, you know, to save accidents with the children going to school. Right. But we, we don't need this amount, surely. Local mechanic Eddie Knowles showed me the effect speed humps can have on your car. But basically what you're going to see is this edge here yep. starting to wear away due to the tracking being out. These bushes here being worn. Coil springs, which we, we've got at the top here. Yes. Which you can see sometimes they fracture. What would you like to see happen? Well... I would like a lot of the bumps taken away and just leaving the ones that are necessary. But according to the council, they are all necessary. They were introduced five years ago as part of the Safer Routes to School scheme at a cost of over £190,000. But as well as damaging people's cars, they're damaging the people themselves. I suffer from rheumatoid arthritis, which I've suffered from for about the last six years, and going over these humps is, uh, is a nightmare. It hits me in the joints, that's the problem. And very often, if I'm thinking of going out for a day, I'll often say, I can't face it. So are these speed humps worse than any others? According to the Highways Road Humps Regulations 1999, a speed hump should be between 25 and 100 millimetres high and no narrower than 900 millimetres. The humps need to be angled with no vertical face more than 6 millimetres. But there's nothing in the Act though about the state of the road the humps are on. Hence these perfectly legal humps have been built in a dip, which is what makes them lethal. How uncomfortable can they be? Let's put these speed humps through their paces. First up, the coffee cup challenge. Next, the lippy lap. And finally, the note taking relay. Well, they certainly make drivers and passengers' lives a misery, but the question is, do they save lives? Let's ask the council. Councillor Carol Dean thinks the stats speak for themselves. As you can see, the number of incidents involving pedestrians has gone from 10 to nil. So I don't think anybody could say that the scheme hasn't been a success. You have both sides. You have people pressurising you, saying they want the safe routes, and then you have a few people who really don't like them. But the amount of applications we get for traffic calming within the county just shows that most people do want the roads to be safe for them. But are speed humps the only solution? Sheila Granger, campaigns manager for the RAC Foundation, thinks alternatives should be considered. The continent have been pioneering this idea of shared space. You actually take away barriers, you take away paint off the roads, and you create an environment where no one road user has got priority. Are you actually saying to me that in a situation like that, say where we are now, outside of school, open it all up, so effectively what it is is like one big playground for children, and that works better? It does work. It sounds, it sounds very odd, it sounds like a really unusual idea, and as you say, it can sound a bit strange, but in the, on the continent it's working very well, and some of the London boroughs are trying this idea, the shared space. Kensington and Chelsea are giving it a go, and also Seven Dials in Covent Garden. They're actually, when you go there now in a car, you can see really clearly it's not an area where the car's got priority, and motorists are slowing down and being much safer. 
No one would deny that we want to make our roads safer for drivers and pedestrians alike. The question is how? And with many new schemes and ideas out there, perhaps it's time to put these sleeping policemen to rest for good.